Good morning and welcome to Chapel by the Sea. Let us turn our hearts towards worship as we listen to the prelude, Yesu, Yesu, Joy of Man's Desiring, presented by Rachel Cox and Janie Spangler. Well, again, welcome uh, and Happy New Year to everybody as we launch ourselves. It's January 1st, and, and um, I, I want you to just remind you that I mentioned about uh, if you wanted to take communion in your homes today, I thought uh, certainly as we look at the new year and we're looking ahead uh, that uh, we could take communion, that would be appropriate. So uh, if you want to do that, make sure you have your bread and your cup and, and uh, so be ready as uh, at the near the end of the service we will participate in Holy Communion. Uh, the question I have for us today is not so much, uh, you know, what's your goals for this year or, you know, your New Year's resolution, but what are you concerned about? I want us to think about that as, as we go through uh, this time of worship. To begin with, uh, uh, Lynn Dugan is going to play uh, a couple of verses of We Three Kings, and uh, if you want to sing along, you're certainly welcome. So listen to Lynn as she plays We Three Kings.
So let us bow now for an opening prayer. Lord, as we approach this new year, maybe we do have goals or resolutions or things we want to go better or trying to get rid of last year. Whatever the case, Lord, I just pray that you who is the same yesterday, today, and forever would be with us this day, that as we worship, that it would inspire our hearts and minds to turn towards you, that whatever comes this day and the next day, that we can always experience your joy uh, that is just tremendous. And so we thank you for that joy and just ask that uh, you bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture uh, this morning is talking about newness. Uh, from Revelation uh, chapter 21, and uh, remember it's a revelation, it, it's, it's uh, not revelations, uh, but uh, near the end of the book of Revelation, uh, John sees a new heaven and a new earth. Hear these words. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and no mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things have, has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. A good word from John and the book of Revelation. As we enter our time of prayer, uh, one of the things that the new year does for me is I reflect, obviously, on the past year, year 2022, and, and think of the, the good and, and the bad and maybe some of the ugly. And, and uh, now, though, that uh, this new year comes about, uh, we think of freshness and newness and, and uh, wanting uh, the things that uh, ha happen for us that will be joyful. But we also have concerns, and I asked you the question earlier, uh, what are you concerned about? Instead of thinking about our resolutions or whatever that sometimes don't come to fruition, uh, but what are we concerned about? Are we concerned about those people who are displaced? I mean, those immigrants who are trying to get into the United States and, and uh, through El Paso and just sleeping on the streets in cold weather and and I just all women and and children and men uh, just it's it's just uh, and hearing some of their stories uh, is it's just so difficult and the people uh, over in Ukraine who have been displaced or are still there and having no power no electricity no what anything hardly any water I mean uh, it's got to be so difficult and living in fear uh, and yet they were still uh, celebrating Christmas and, and, and how in interesting that is. And so as we go to prayer, uh, what are we concerned about this day? And think about others uh, in, in, as we share our concern. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, in the midst of it all, we give thanks. We give thanks for this new year, even though we cannot see ahead. That we have to live in the moment, we have to live each day. We are concerned, Lord, for people who struggle with relationships or are struggling to make ends meet who are displaced, who are looking for freedom. 
looking for just some hope in their lives. Lord, can you challenge us to reach out to what Matthew calls the least of these. The least, the last, the lost, the lonely. People that a lot of folks look down upon and yet still are your children. Touch our hearts with your compassion, your care, your concern. That that genuine concern would make a difference in the life of someone else. So Lord, help us to look forward that each day we allow you to be in control that we know that not only good things will happen, but even in the bad things that a light will shine. So let your light shine in the darkness, Lord, as we move forward in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'd like you to listen to the hymn that we sing each Sunday. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Carl Fernstrom will share that. second of our scriptures this morning uh, is from Matthew 25. And in Matthew 25, there are three parables. I'll touch on that in just a couple of moments. But the last of the parables that Jesus tell, shares is called the sheep and the goats. Hear these words. When the Son of Man is, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on the glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was stranger, and you uh, gave me, took me in. And I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did you see uh, you as a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whenever you did this one to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, that from the eternal fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. 
They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whenever you did not do this for the one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. May God add his blessings that we would understand and live out this word. Let us pray. God, your word challenges us. Lift us up now that as we seek to live out this word that we will follow you the rest of our days. Amen. So as I mentioned before, the question of what is it that we are concerned about these days? And what are we concerned about as we move into a new year? Uh, I've been down the road of resolutions and pretty much threw those away a few years ago because I never really was able uh, to uh, follow through very well with New Year's resolutions or setting goals for myself. Even though goals are important, uh, sometimes uh, they get lost and, and if we don't make the goal, we get depressed. And, and, and so uh, I don't really do that. But what I would like us to think about, uh, rather than goals or resolutions, is genuine concern and how that can impact not only ourselves, but the people around us. I like to look at Gallup uh, a lot of times. Gallup sends me uh, every week uh, a, a link to look at their statistics and some of the uh, evaluations they've done uh, over the last uh, few weeks or months. And, and uh, often, and this has been regular the last uh, few weeks, uh, many times they, they send statistics related to uh, how uh, uh, employees are, are disenfranchised or, or dissatisfied with their jobs, and, and uh, it, their statistics, at least according to Gallup, is well over 50% of workers report that they are a somewhat or very uh, disappointed uh, in their job situation. They, they just don't like it. They're not and, and Gallup uh, has some solutions or some things that they've done statistically to indicate that the ones that are thriving in their jobs, uh, something really important happens. And the one thing that keeps re being repeated over and over is that the leaders of the company, uh, the owner, the, the CEOs, those who are in higher positions and have authority over people, if they are willing to be interested in, this, in, in the well-being of their workers, then the workers are much happier. And what does well-being mean? Well-being to Gallup means that uh, it's the holistic health, it's the mind, the body, and the spirit, that all of those three work together to create a state of well-being and happiness uh, in the workplace. Well, uh, that whole sense of genuine concern uh, makes the difference. And, and that's what I think uh, Jesus is talking about when, when he relates uh, some stories, uh, some parables. And, and remember that the parable uh, it was a teaching tool in Jesus' day. All the rabbis used it. And usually it was a story that had one meaning, a word picture, you might say. And, and so uh, we have to go back to Matthew 24 uh, uh, to really understand the text that we're using today from Matthew 25, because in Matthew 24, uh, Jesus and the disciples are walking in the temple, and, and they're talking about the, the temple and how beautiful the stones are, and Jesus then predicts that the, the, the temple would be devastated. Uh, and, and then he goes on to continue to teach uh, the disciples about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, remember, is not necessarily a place, but it's wherever God reigns in the hearts and minds of the faithful. So Jesus and the disciples, Jesus is teaching the disciples about life in the kingdom of God. And, and so he goes on then in chapter 25 uh, to talk about three different parables 
And, and the, fair, the first parable is about the ten virgins and, and waiting for the bridegroom to come. And, and in those days, they trimmed their lamps and, and so that because they never knew maybe the uh, bridegroom would come at midnight, so they needed a lamp, they needed light to know when he was coming. And, and the story basically is about the five uh, uh, virgins that... Uh, trimmed their lamps and had extra oil and were, was prepared, and the five that in the end were not prepared and were not able to come in to the party. And so the whole idea is, is it, as, we, as we live into the kingdom of God, uh, then it, it is important for us uh, to be ready. And then the second, uh, the second parable has to do with the bags of gold and, and uh, the, the landowner, which is the king, uh, leaves town and, and leaves all of his uh, wealth and business to, to workers. And, and, uh, the whole, and, he, and the one worker invests the money uh, that, that uh, was allocated to him, and a second worker invest, invested a little bit less, but, but still invested, and, and, it, and it grew. Uh, and, but the third one buried uh, his, uh, his investment because he was fearful. And so the point of the whole thing was be invested in, in God's kingdom as, as we live out in that state of, of well-being. And, and uh, so finally we come to uh, Matthew 25, uh, starting with the 31st verse, and it's the story of the sheep and the goats. And as we read the story, you know, you, if you want to look at it, you say, well, uh, after I read that one, I sure want to be a sheep. And, and so sometimes we can conjure up uh, ideas of what it means to be a sheep and maybe if I do if I'm good enough I'll be a sheep and, and because this is when the king comes in his glory at the end of time and he brought, draws all the people from all the nations together and he separates the sheep from the goats but the stunning thing about this this parable is is the whole idea that neither the righteous nor the unrighteous had any idea when they really uh, had ministered to the key to the story, the least of these. Now, Jesus was a person, as we look at the four Gospels, he was loving and caring and, and created a state of well-being with people uh, through his ministry. I mean, he, he not only preached, but, but he also healed, and he cast out demons. He made people whole. That's what salvation means, wholeness. And, and so uh, Jesus did all of this uh, and, and uh, created this idea uh, of the state of well-being. As in, we're looking in the spiritual realm now, uh, not so much physical or emotional, but certainly it helps. But the spiritual realm, uh, we... Uh, as far as Matthew 25 is concerned, it's the whole idea of sharing that, that genuine concern with the least of these. Now, I can tell you that uh, there is an international ministry, maybe you've heard of it. It's called Matthew 25. And, uh, and when I served a church in, in a certain area, all of our churches got together uh, and we had fundraisers to, to give to the Matthew 25 uh, International Project where they reached out to the poor and the oppressed all over the world and, and tried to minister to the least of these. When I, uh, when I was a consultant at churches, uh, one of the things that I would do is, is try to help them get beyond themselves. And that, that's one of the tough parts of uh, when we're in the church, that the church wants to think about them and rather to be concerned with people outside the church. And, and I would even, uh, when I started my consulting, the first time I would arrive at the church, uh, I would stand out there and count the, the number of parking spaces, and I would look to see, do, is there any signs where visitors have the primary parking spaces, or is it only for members? And so the whole point of it was, uh, you know, and, it, and often there was disappointment because people wanted to know all of the ins and outs of how to be an effective church, and yet it was inward. It was that state of well-being that, that, you know, we had that sense of genuine concern. Where does that concern come from? Well, it comes from within. It comes starting with our 
the grace of God, that we are saved by grace and not by works, by faith, lest anyone should boast. We are God's workmanship after we experience God's grace. And so we are in this state as we become new persons in Christ that we are in a state of readiness. We are in a state where we are investing in the kingdom and, and thus when, when, the, when Christ comes a, a second time, we're not, in, we're not worried, we're not anxious. Our concern is with other people. Our concern is to lift up the brokenhearted. Our son, he, he uh, is the pastor of a church uh, which is called Mosaic, Midtown Mosaic. Mosaic is a special word because Mosaic churches specify that they must reach out and connect with the community. They want to reach out to the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely. Uh, it, is a, it, is a, it is a model for churches. There's no doubt about that but it has to start with you and me. It's not about rules. It's not about, you know, being better. Uh, it, it's more about having our relationship with Christ. Uh, as Paul says, the love of Christ controls us. Can we imagine what would happen if the love of Christ controlled us day after day after day. You see, then we wouldn't have to worry about what's going to happen in July of 2023. We wouldn't have to worry all so much about our finances and other things because each day we are in this state of well-being. And the joy of the Lord it be, it becomes our strength, and we live that out in the world today. So here we are. It's a new year. Do we feel refreshed? Do we have a sense of happiness, a sense of well-being? Look to the Lord and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, for he will lift us up. And just like Paul said, the most excellent way is faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Experience that every day, and we will be in that state of well-being, and we will not worry about coming to that final day when Christ calls us home. I'd like us now to hear this anthem from Lynn Dugan, He is Lord, and O oh, come, let us adore Him.
Well, dear friends, as I mentioned, um, I think it's appropriate for us as we start fresh and experience, as I mentioned, about God's grace coming into our hearts and making a difference in our lives, that as we live out that love relationship, that we just continue to reach out and make a difference in the lives of people, especially those who are the least of these. So today, I think it's appropriate for us, each one of us, to remember that Jesus had our well-being in mind when he went to the cross, that he went to the cross and died for our sins. And then when he was raised on the third day, he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He is the great judge, but he is the great one who gives us that grace. And so we continue to take communion. We take the bread and the cup, remembering what Jesus has done for each one of us. So today, dear friends, take the bread. For uh, the night that Jesus was betray betrayed, he took the bread, and after he had blessed it and he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat this, for this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Dear friends, take the bread. And after supper, he took the cup. And after he had blessed it, he said, this cup represents the new covenant of blood that I will shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Dear friends, take the cup. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your wonderful grace. Grace is amazing. Grace gives us blessed assurance that we might reach out and minister to one of the least of these. Amen. Well, we have many ministries, not only on Captiva, but actually in Sanibel and, and, uh, and uh, Fort Myers. And we touch the lives of people, uh, seeking to minister to the least of these and to lift them up, to help them to have a, be in a state of well-being uh, where they feel fulfilled, where they feel a sense of joy. And so we continue to do that even though, quote, we are closed at this time. But uh, uh, it's just ama amazing that our missions committee continues uh, to uh, reach out and, and uh, develop funds and, and give funds to those agencies that are making a difference. And we will continue uh, to do that. Uh, a great big thank you to all of those who have donated uh, to the ministry of the chapel, the restoration uh, of the chapel, uh, and, and uh, so many of you have written wonderful notes and emails and text and other things. Uh, we, we just, w I want to thank you all uh, for your great, deep, uh, genuine concern for Chapel by the Sea. So we will continue to reach out. We will continue to seek to touch lives. Thank you for that. Before I give the benediction, I want to just uh, mention to us that uh, to all that uh, were set a target date of, of having live services down at Chapel by the Sea, and that is January 29th. And if anything changes, I will let you know, uh, but that's our target date at this point. And uh, so, uh, Happy New Year to all of you, and, and uh, try to live in that state of well-being as you soak in the grace of God. Let us pray. Lord, go with us now, and may your love be in and through us, that people, whoever they are, will not see us, but see you. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'd like us to listen to the postlude, Go Tell It on the Mountain, a very familiar Christmas hymn played by Lynn Dugan. 